Hey, what is going on, CF students? Man, isn't our God incredible? Can we just make some noise for our God wherever you are watching this right now at home, maybe in the car, maybe it's been some time and you're watching this video. Listen, our God is so good and he loves us. Man, welcome. If you don't know, my name is Robert. I serve as the student director at the West Kendall campus. And because I'm dressed a little bit different, well, one, I want you to know we are in our summer tour. Come on, who's excited that we are still in our summer tour? We're in our second week. We are supposed to be in our Doral campus, but if you're watching this, most likely you weren't able to join us there, and that's okay. Maybe you're on vacation, maybe you're traveling, etc., but we hope that you're able to make it to a campus soon as we are doing these events, and we are in this incredible relationship series, and we're in week two, uh, and before we dive into that, I gotta let everybody know that in just a couple of days on Sunday, July 28th, later this week, we are having our student takeover. Who's excited for our student takeover? Come on, come on, make some noise for our student takeover. If you haven't been part of this, this is, uh, it's been a couple of years since we do it, but every single campus, man, we're taking over that night, that day, and it's gonna be absolutely amazing. Please make sure to come out there, represent, wear your merch from any of the rallies. It's gonna be a great, great Sunday as we rep our student ministry. Well, hey, tonight we are talking about something in relationships that I believe we all need to be reminded of, and perhaps maybe for us today, maybe it's good for us to refresh or relearn these things. And tonight we're actually going to be talking about boundaries. We're going to be talking about boundaries. In fact, say that word with me wherever you are. Say boundaries. I got two verses for us today as we dive into God's word. The first one is in Proverbs 4.23, and it goes like this. It says, keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. And the second verse is Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 4, and it goes like this. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that you not stir up or awaken love until it pleases. If you are taking notes tonight, my first thing that I want you to write down is the title, and that is Live in the Boundaries. Live in the Boundaries, CAF students. Wherever you are right now, can you just pray with me before we dive even deeper into this conversation and sermon? Heavenly Father, we just come before you, God. Lord, may you replace me and teach us about these Boundaries, God, that you've given us as your people, as your children, when it comes to relationships, God, when it comes to uh, even, even getting closer to marriage and dating, Lord. God, give us the grace and wisdom that we need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right, CF students. Man, I don't know about you, but this summer has been extra special for me. I don't know, maybe for you. Maybe you've had a lot of free time, vacations, uh, going to go check out different amusement parks, etc. But for whatever reason, for this summer, it's been so special to me because there have been a lot of sports happening. A lot of sports happening. I don't know if anybody's been enjoying or enjoyed the Euro Cup final or the Copa America final. It was incredible. The Copa America final was actually here in Miami. Man, shout out to Argentina. Shout out to Spain for winning their tournament. Uh, I'm still healing. I'm Peruvian. My country was eliminated like at the beginning. Uh, hopefully next time we get, we get the better of them. But listen, not only did we have these two incredible soccer tournaments happening, but literally we are about to start the Olympics in Paris. And I don't know about you, I really enjoy the Olympics. Anybody in enjoy the Olympics? They're watching, yeah, yeah, yeah. You enjoy it? Awesome. Listen, one of my favorite things to watch in the in Olympics, out of all the sports, out of all the competitions, it has to be, it has to be the relay race. The relay race. Take a look at this image. The relay race. Absolutely amazing, crazy how they move. They, they run so fast. They have the batons. Um, and the reason why I really enjoy watching this race is because there's many different types of races in the Olympics. We got the 400-meter uh, sprints. We have the 300-meter sprint. Uh, we have different types of alternatives with hurdles. And they're all really fun to watch because they're so thrilling because there's, they're literally less than like 40 to 30 seconds. But the reason why I enjoy watching the relay race that much more is because I believe 
it's a little bit more competitive. It's a little bit more competitive because not only are you working with a different, uh, different people and you have to trust your teammates, but it is one of the few races in all of the Olympics and in all of running in general where every single runner that is running this relay race, you are forbidden from crossing the boundary of your lane. In other words, if we are running this race in this relay, not a single one of our teammates or myself would be able to cross these boundary lines and go to a different lane. In fact, I didn't know this, but if any single member of this team during the relay race crosses the boundary line and goes into another lane or gets an advantage because of that, even if they were the fastest, even if they were the best, even if they were most favored to win, they would be automatically disqualified. Disqualified from the whole entire race if they just cross a toe over that boundary line. I think you know exactly where I'm going with this CF students. Our God has given us boundary lines to honor as his children, specifically when we come into relationships and as we head into that direction of marriage. And so today I want us to lean into this conversation and this sermon because I really believe that these are amazing boundary lines that God has given us to protect us and guide us to get to where we want to be. All right, to get to where we want to be. And you know what? I think that there's some boundary lines that maybe as you're listening to this, we all know, we all respect, we're all okay with. Like for instance, everybody respects the boundary line of gravity. If we were standing on a cliff or at the edge of a tall building, and I was like, hey, I'll race you to the bottom. You go jump down. I'll take the stairs. You probably would be like, you first. Like, I'm not jumping down. I understand gravity. There's a boundary line that I can't fly, that if I jump down, I'm going to get seriously hurt or injured, right? There's another boundary line of the, the traffic lights, right? If there is traffic coming, 100 miles per hour, cars dashing in this Miami traffic, and you need to cross the road, and I was like, oh, you know, cross it there. You would be like, no, I'm going to wait for the red light because I'm not, I'm going to get hit by a moving car. Boundary lines that we know have immediate effect if we do not honor because we can also see them, right? These are immediate boundary lines that we can see, that we understand. But what about the immediate boundary lines that maybe do affect us, but we don't see up close? If you're taking notes, I want us to write this down as our first point for tonight. God has given us relational boundaries. God has given us relational boundaries, see of students, and write this down as point A and point B. He's given us emotional boundaries, you know, our hearts, our minds, our feelings, our emotions, and B, he's given us intimacy boundaries. Now, this isn't just the physicalness of boundaries, right? This is also talking about the spiritual sense of boundaries in relationships. And we're going to be talking about those in a little bit. But write that down. God has given us relational boundaries and he's given us emotional boundaries in them and intimacy boundaries in them. I want to go back real quick to the verses. Proverbs 4.23 goes like this. It says, keep your heart with all vigilance for from it flow the springs of life. Songs of Solomon 8.4, I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that you not stir up or awaken love until it pleases. You know, I find it so interesting that King Solomon, the second wisest man to Jesus, gives us these two verses. And even though the, the, the latter one has to do more with relationships and, and, and marriage, uh, the first one still applies to what we're talking about today when it comes to our boundaries in relationships. And before we even go into that, I'm going to be honest. If you are here and you are a child of God, the most important relationship that will ever matter, that will ever be the one to fight for, is going to be the relationship between you and Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And perhaps if you are here today and you are trying to break these boundaries that we're going to talk about because you're trying to find acceptance, you're trying to find love, you're trying to find affirmation in other things and in other people, listen, you're going to be constantly disappointed 
because only Jesus can give you those deep desires that you and I need as his people. So emotional boundaries, emotional boundaries. What are these emotional boundaries that, as God's word says, we need to guard our heart with all vigilance? First, I need you to know in this wisdom that King Solomon is giving, the only one responsible for guarding your heart is yourself. So that means you need to be self-aware, see if students, you need to be self-aware, young man, young woman, who you are letting in your life, who you are letting in your circle. Because people and relationships have a big part to play in our hearts. And here's how I know. Obviously, our first relationship should be with Jesus, and we should be in love with him and fight for that relationship. And then we have, you know, family, and then we have friends, right? We have family and friends. And let's be honest, sometimes... It's our family and close friends that hurt us the most. And some of those things are out of control. You know, maybe you've been affected by family members or by friends. And, man, you struggle now with trust. You struggle now with maybe confidence. You struggle maybe with love. You struggle with forgiveness. And listen, I share that all with you because I need you to know, if we understand, like, man, people have hurt us, people have affected our hearts and our minds, and we maybe have become to believe certain lies, and we're working on those things right now in our lives, please listen to the boundary that if you needed to guard your heart, please don't try to mess with somebody else's heart. I'm going to say that again. If you know people have affected your heart, people that love you, that care about you, family, friends. And again, some of, the, some of those things are outside of your control. And God's word calls us to forgive and to heal and to extend grace. Please know that if you need to guard your heart, we shouldn't be affecting other people's hearts as well. And listen, I get it. I'm not saying, by the way, that if you like someone now, that if you one day want to marry someone right now, that's a bad thing. In fact, raise your hand if you hope to one day have a beautiful, healthy, loving relationship and marriage and kids. Yes, exactly. Of course, God gave us those desires. God created marriage. God created relationship. All the way in Genesis, Adam and Eve, right? God said, it is not good for man to be alone. But please, please don't lose focus. All that stuff is waiting. But there are boundaries that you and I need to keep, need to honor. Because listen, I know many people right now, and, and there's so many beautiful testimonies, that yes, chances are that if you are in a good friend group or in a good godly community in a church, chances are you will probably meet your future spouse here in church, in a small group, etc. But what I'm saying to you right now and what God's saying to you right now is to guard your heart. Young man, young woman. I get that you could like someone. I get that you could be even falling in love with someone. But please know that as Christian people, marriage is the end goal. And if right now you are in a season and a place where you are still in middle school, you are still in high school, you don't have the, maybe the capacity, the, the, the wealth to maybe get married, get engaged, have all that, be independent, Perhaps it's maybe to realize it may not be the time to get involved into a romantic relationship. And maybe it's time to just be friends and respect one another's boundaries when it comes to hanging out alone, hanging out late at night, going over each other's homes without parental supervision, DMing each other, Snapchatting each other. Listen, I remember being in middle school and high school, and I remember all those feelings, all those emotional, uh, emotional responses in my heart. See, if student, love is a beautiful thing, and a relationship is a beautiful thing, but if we don't respect the boundary of, man, why would I be getting involved with someone that maybe I don't know where they are with God, Maybe you're still working your relationship with God. Maybe you don't really know what marriage is. Maybe you're still figuring out your life, who you want to be, your calling, your purpose. And like every one of us, we all have struggles. We all have baggage that we're still dealing with. 
Again, I'm not saying that eventually you could one day get married to that person that's on your mind or on your heart or in your inner circle. I'm not disagreeing with you on that. What I'm saying is, is right now the right time to actually do that? Or is it better to guard your heart with all vigilance? Because let's be honest, the, the word of God lets us know clearly, right, that we are called to love our Lord our God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, and to love our neighbor as we love, as, uh, to love our neighbor as, as we love ourselves, right? And so think about it. If our hearts are constantly being tossed and tor- turned, and we are giving our hearts, but they're being crushed because we're getting into a relationship with someone or we're starting to talk to someone and they're not serious about marriage, they're not serious about anything, they don't have the same values or boundaries and respects that you do, it's going to affect your relationship with God. It's going to reflect, uh, affect your relationship with the people around you and how you serve and how you lead and how you come here. And for those of you wondering... And a lot of the testimonies that I know from people that got married, they met their wives or their husbands in their friend groups. So the friend zone is the end zone, sea of students. The friend zone is the end zone, sea of students. Now the intimacy boundary. I want to go back to Song of Solomon 8.4. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that you not stir up or awaken love until it pleases. I think you all know where I'm going with this. If you are not respecting that line of emotional boundary, and maybe you are already dating or you're uh, in a relationship and you're crossing lines, you're, you're, you're being alone, uh, you're, you're moving very fast-paced with this person even though you guys have no goal or ambition of marriage or figuring all that out, you are towing the line of crossing this intimacy boundary. And there's a danger to doing this. I need everybody to know, everybody to know, that God created sex, and sex is a good thing, but God created sex for us to enjoy it in the boundaries of marriage between one man and one woman in holy matrimony, in holy matrimony. And listen, intimacy, more than just the physical aspect of sex, listen, Everyone desires to be loved, to be cared for, to have their needs met. Everyone desires that. But in that moment of intimacy in marriage, it's not just that that's being met. It's actually also vulnerability. The fact the word of God says it in, 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 in Genesis where it says when uh, Adam married Eve, they were naked and unashamed. In other words, they were completely open to each other, not just physically, but spiritually, their hearts, their souls, they didn't hide anything. They didn't, they didn't try to keep anything from themselves. And that is a different level of intimacy. That's a spiritual intimacy where two become one, as it says in God's word. And if, listen, you are crossing that boundary, and maybe you're thinking like, Robert, but I really love this person. I really love this girl. I really love this guy. Like, it's, it's, not, it's not hurting anyone. It's not harmful. I would just say to you this in the most loving way I can. Be very careful that you're not confusing love with lust. Be very careful that you're not confusing love with lust. You know, someone asked me last year on our Q&A panel, we were doing a, a live Q&A, uh, and Jess was leading this, it was amazing. A student asked me, uh, what's too far with my girlfriend or boyfriend? And you know what I told them? God only sees us two ways, see of students. Brother and sister, husband and wife. Brother and sister, husband and wife. How far is too far? How far would you go with your sister? How far would you go with your brother? I know some of you are like, ew, like that's disgusting. I don't need that image in my head at all. I get it. But I want you to know, God only sees us that way. So think about it. If you are not married to that person, that is somebody else's wife, that is somebody else's husband, and perhaps you are hurting yourself more than you understand, and you are crossing all these lines, and you are having conversations, you are creating moments and memories that don't even belong to the person that you're with. They belong to your actual husband and your actual wife, and you're just creating, sadly, more hurt and more pain and sorrow And that verse that we read in Solomon, it's a poetic book. It's a beautiful book. It's about marriage. It's about intimacy. 
But the warning that we get in this book is that once these emotions and these passions of love and intimacy, as they start to come up, and we are creatures of that sort, it's really hard. It's really hard to stop. You don't believe me? Ask any small group leader that's married. Ask any small group leader that's married to have a healthy marriage. And I would even argue, if you don't even trust me, look around the room and maybe ask people their testimonies or even look in God's word and ask how many people cross this line of intimacy in the name of love, but rather it was all out of lust. So many people that have crossed this line have regrets, have burdens, have broken families, have broken trusts, have awkward conversations when they actually have to meet their real wife or real husband. So much baggage that, listen, God in his loving mercy doesn't want you and I to have or to carry. You know, I, I, we were talking about this not too long ago. Our image of God really plays a role in how we see him. And I know for many of us, and I remember being your guys' age, I used to think, man, God is robbing me of experiencing all these things that everybody else in this world and this culture and this society is doing. But no, he's not robbing us. He's preserving us because he wants us to experience all these things in the right moment with the right woman or the right godly man that he has for us. You see, anytime we choose to cross the boundaries that God has given us in relationships, the only one that is stealing is ourselves. We're stealing from our own moments of precious gifts that God has given us. Now, I know that was a lot. And I know that maybe some of you in this room and and, and watching, you're like, Rob, I've crossed those boundaries. I'm making those mistakes right now. Well, listen, I got good news. There's a second point. There's a second point to this sermon. Write this down as our second point. God can redeem our cross boundaries. God can redeem our cross boundaries, CF students. That's how good, that's how powerful, that's how loving he is. With grace and salvation, his grace and his beautiful and powerful salvation... And B, with healing and discipline. With healing and discipline. Stay with me on this. Ephesians 2, 4 to 5 says this. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Whether or not you are crossing those boundaries or you have crossed those boundaries, listen, all the way in Adam and Eve's time when they crossed the boundary of disobeying God and it affected humanity, listen, we're all sinners, the word of God says. We've already crossed the boundaries that God has already given us. This is an excuse. This is the reality of our situation. But Jesus is so good. God is so good that he would send his only son to die for you and I while we were broken, while we were outside his boundaries, while we were far from him. And he chose, he chose to die and to save us and to rise again from the dead three days later after being crucified on the cross. And he offers, he offers his grace and he offers his salvation to anyone who believes in him. And maybe for some of you here in this room, you want that salvation, you want that grace. You don't want to keep making the same mistakes. And if you are a child of God, listen, that grace and that salvation still remain but please stop abusing it. Take it seriously what you are doing. Now the second part is healing and discipline. Read this, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 goes like this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. And Matthew six thirty three, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness And all these things will be added to you. I wish I could tell you that once we cross these boundaries, there aren't consequences, that it doesn't take time to heal, but that would be a lie. 
There is grace, there is forgiveness, there is hope. But you got to do some self-work. And maybe that's separating from the person that you're with right now or dating or talking to. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, we were talking about this not too long ago with Pastor Carlos. It, it is a proverb that actually comes with a promise. And that's if we surrender our lives to God, if we confess our sins to God, if we get accountability and we say, I struggle with this or I'm struggling in this, in my relationship with whatever I'm doing. Listen, in time, God can heal us. God can redeem the brokenness of our purity, the brokenness of our heart, the brokenness of everything in us because that is what he came to do. He came to save and make us whole. But it happens with him and obeying him. That's why part of the healing is discipline. Child of God, it's really hard, like the word of God says, once you're stirring up passion or once you're provoking that line of passion and intimacy, it's hard to stop unless you get some help and unless you get some discipline and accountability in your life. And that calls us to seek his kingdom. That calls us to be in godly community and have godly mentors and ask for help. You know, my, my title for tonight was Live in the Boundaries. And the truth is, see, as students, we can choose to live in the boundaries or we can choose to be hurt in the wilderness. And the choice is yours. If you're a child of God here tonight, you have a decision to make. If you are crossing these boundaries, God can redeem it. God can forgive. God can restore. But Jesus is a gentleman. He's not going to force you. And you got some hard decisions to make. But if you are here for the first time and you don't have a single relationship with Jesus, the most important thing that I can ever tell you is that the greatest relationship you will ever need is not going to be a guy, it's not going to be a girl, it's not going to be a career. It's going to be Jesus Christ who has the power to forgive you of your sins and save your souls. And tonight, he wants you to live in the boundaries and he wants to save you. So I'm going to ask every head to be bowed and every eye to be closed. And if you're here today and you're feeling that brokenness, you're feeling that guilt, you're feeling that shame, and you want out, you're in the wilderness and you're being hurt by it, and you want to come back to the boundaries, you're tired of towing the line, you're tired of getting the same taste of sin over and over again from not listening, Jesus says, to anyone who believes and calls upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. I want to lead you through a prayer. It's very simple. Don't pray this to me. Pray this to God. Repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I give you my life. I believe in Jesus. I believe he came. I believe he lived. And I believe he died just for me. I repent of my sins. Thank you for saving me. I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, CF students, let's make some noise for our God. Our God is so good. Our God is so powerful, so loving. Man, we should be grateful for these boundaries and all the things that he has in store for us relationship. They are good, but they are good in his timing and in his ways. I hope this blessed you. I hope this helped you. Don't forget this Sunday. Woo! We got student takeover. It's going to be amazing. A blessed Sunday. Make sure to come out. I love you all so much. God bless you.